The smartphone industry has grown up so much that people are going crazy over them. And I don't think that's bad since we love technology and it's never going to die. But if you wonder how did we even get here, then you are in the right place. In this video, I'll show you the drastic evolution of a smartphone from this to this. So let's get right into the video. Before the smartphone, there were cell phones that was first invented by Motorola company back in 1973. Thanks to father of cell phone Martin Copper, who invented the first cell phone and made the first publicized handheld phone call on a prototype Dynatic model. I said, I'm calling you from a cell phone. And there was silence at the other end of the line. After a decade in 1983, the first cell phone that is a Dynatic 8000X was commercially available in the market with the massive price tag of $3,995 that's about $10,425 in 2020. You can see how big uh, this phone is. The phone weighed 1.1 kilograms and it offered a talk time of just 30 minutes and took 10 hours to recharge. Thankfully, this bad boy came and completely changed the game. The first phone which can be called as a smartphone. IBM developed the world's first smartphone in 1992. They revealed a revolutionary device that had more capabilities than its preceding cell phones. This prototype smartphone was known as the Simon Personal Communicator which went on sale in 1994 and featured a touchscreen, email capability and a handful of built-in apps including a calculator and a sketchpad. The Simon Personal Communicator was the smartphone made by combining a mobile phone and PDA into one device allowing a user to make and receive telephone calls, faxes, emails and cellular pages. With that being said, it also featured a LCD display and has PC card support as well. BellSouth initially offered Simon for $899 with a 2-year service contract or $1099 without a contract. But later in the product's life, BellSouth Cellular reduced the price to $599 that's about $3995 in 2020 with a 2-year contract which was a pretty good deal so they succeed to sold approximately 50,000 units during the product's 6 months on the market. After the great invention of first smartphone by IBM, Nokia introduced the Nokia 2110 which is a cellular phone made by Finnish telecommunication frame. It was the first Nokia phone with the famous Nokia ringtone. The Nokia 2110 was considerably smaller than others of its price and had a bigger display so it became very popular. It also featured a revolutionary new user interface featuring with two dynamic soft keys which would later lead to the development of Navi key on its successor, the Nokia 3110 as well as the Series 20 interface. A later version, the Nokia 2110i, released in 1994 came up with more memory and the Nokia 2140 aka Nokia Orange was the launch handset on the Orange network which was designed to work on 1800 MHz frequency and had a slightly less bulbous design. Again after 5 months, SP launched the SP200 LX pumped up PC also known as Project Felix, which is a personal digital assistant introduced by SP. It was often called a palm top PC featuring MS-DOS compatible computer in a palm top format complete with a monochrome graphic display, QWERTY keyboards, serial ports, and PCMCI expansion slot. Similarly, in 1996, Nokia introduced the Nokia 9000 communicator which was the first product in Nokia's communicator series. It was powered by an Intel 24MHz i386 CPU and had 8MB of memory which was divided into 3 parts, 4MB for applications, 2MB for program memory and 2MB for user data. Later in mid-2000s, business users in the US started to adopt devices based on Microsoft's Windows Mobile and the BlackBerry smartphones. American users popularized the term QuackBerry in 2006 due to the BlackBerry's addiction nature. 
the late 2000s and early 2010s saw shift in smartphone interface away from devices with physical keyboards and keypads to ones with larger finger-operated capacitive touchscreens. The first phone of any kind with a larger capacitive touchscreen was the LG Prada announced by LG in December 2006. And in January 2007, Apple introduced the iPhone. These are not three separate devices. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. It had a 3.5 inch capacitive touch screen with twice the common resolution of most smartphone screens at the time and introduced the multi touch to phones which allowed gestures such as pinching to zoom in or zoom out photos, maps and web pages. The iPhone was notable as being the first device of its kind targeted at the mass market to abandon the use of stylus, keyboard or keypad typical of contemporary smartphones instead using a large touch screen for direct input as its main means of interaction. However, Android was based on a modified Linux kernel, again providing more power than mobile operating systems adapted from PDAs and feature phones. The first Android device, the horizontal sliding LTC Dream, was released in September 2008 and from then, the battle of Android and iOS begins. Gradually, we saw tons of smartphones from variety of brands by 2010, which gave multiple options to people. In 2011, Samsung took a high risk and launched the Galaxy Note with massive 5.5-inch SD Super AMOLED wide XGA display with a display resolution of 800 by 1280 and people even trolled them for the huge display but eventually when they used the phone they got to know the advantages of bigger display and Samsung sold 10 million units worldwide. I think from this year you probably used most of the phones so I'll keep it short and simple. In 2012, Samsung introduced the Galaxy S3 with pop-up video playback, 4G LTE variant and quad-core processor. And in 2013, Samsung again came up with a unique phone that is Samsung's Galaxy Round which had the curved display. Whereas 2014 was the year of Microsoft unveiling functionality for its Windows 10 operating system for phones that allowed supported device to be docked for use with a PC-style desktop environment. Samsung and LG used to be the last standing manufacturers to offer flagship devices with user-replaceable batteries. But in 2015, Samsung adopted the minimalism trend set by Apple, introducing the Galaxy S6 without a user-replaceable battery. In addition, Samsung was criticized for trimming its long-standing features such as MHL, micro USB 3.0, water resistant, and micro SD card support, of which they came back in 2016 with the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge but again, the unforgettable Galaxy Note 7 battery issue crashed the Samsung market. The battery explosion was so common that the Galaxy Note 7 was even forbidden in some places to carry around. In 2018, Huawei launched the Huawei Nova 4 which was the first smartphone to feature a punch hole cutout for selfie camera. And it was also the year of first foldable smartphone that is the Royal Flex Pi. It was made by Chinese company Royal and technically it is a first foldable smartphone but it didn't made its way to the United States so it didn't caught the attention of people outside the tech space. However, in 2019, we saw Galaxy Fold and Moto Razr with a foldable display and also some attractive and powerful phones like the Galaxy Note 10 series and great camera phones as well. Finally, in 2020, Samsung came up with great improvement in the foldable phones and yes, the 2020 is the year of camera bump as we saw massive camera bump in most of the Samsung flagship. Well, now you have watched this video, you know pretty well about the history, but what about the future? For that, subscribe to my channel since I'll be sharing the leaks of upcoming smartphones and as always, I'll catch you in the next one.